The readings that have been selected for this baccalaureate mass go hand in hand together in a very real way for on the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time that we celebrate every three years in the A cycle. This reading from the Book of Kings and this reading from the Gospel of Matthew are proclaimed. And it's a very good choice. In today's first reading, we meet the unusual figure of the prophet Elijah, and the key to understanding all about Elijah is what his name means. His name means the Lord is God. Does that not echo the last words of our gospel today? Truly you are the Son of God. And, of course, Elijah's very name is linked to our ultimate value, which is God. And that's really what we should want to be. We should want to be a man of God, a woman of God. The big spiritual question that we can pose to ourselves at significant moments such as this, or indeed, at any time in our lives, would be, who or what is my God? What is my ultimate value? What is my ultimate meaning? You know, at the end of the day, who or what matters to me the most? And an honest answer to that question will reveal to us self-knowledge as to who we really are. Elijah was a man of God. Perhaps that's why he seems so unusual. But God was his ultimate value and good. But we know there are other answers to the question, who or what is my God? We may have experienced them ourselves already. It takes us back to the first commandment. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. And there are many diverse forms of idolatry today. We certainly can face the facts that the majority of college students are just as happy with a secular career-oriented education and that many of their parents are willing to subordinate the true value of education and growing in faith to a combination of student desires and worldly success. It's rather commonplace today. And yet we know that even as we move beyond graduation from college, there are many other things that compete for our time and our energies and our abilities. One of the first things that comes to mind is the family and how the family can sometimes be in opposition to love of God. It was never intended to be, it's a both and. But sometimes family trumps everything. The same thing that can be said for pleasure We know of people who are known as good time Charlies. They remain so throughout their lives. One would think that that is their principal pursuit. And of course, we all know about sports. You know, not many of us are gonna be playing basketball when we're 62 years old. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of us put so much value in athletics and competition we can see how, how much influence a coach has over an athlete. It's not to be discounted. Of course, there is career in business. We know of somebody who's called a company man or company person. Now, all of these things are good, we know. None of them are mutually exclusive with following our Christian vocation. You know, athletics, career, loved ones, but they need to fall in line behind Elijah's number one value. The Lord is God. 
Now, if we look in more detail at our first reading, Elijah is running away from the queen of Israel because he has just put to death all of her false prophets. And he is hiding on Mount Horeb, which we also call Mount Sinai, the place where Moses received the Ten Commandments. The Lord tells Elijah to go outside the cave and stand on the mountain because he will be passing by. And what follows is an impressive display of natural power. Wind crushing rocks, an earthquake, a fire. Some of us have experienced these things. And if not, we have certainly seen footage on TV of forest fires of massive earthquakes such as in Nepal, of the strength of wind, what hurricanes and tornadoes can do. So we can imagine how frightened the ancient peoples must have been. But notice that during all these displays of natural power, Elijah remains inside the cave because he knew that the Lord was not present in these powerful but created things, things that would not last. He was not impressed. He was not moved. But there came a tiny whispering sound, and Elijah hides his face in his cloak, and he stands at the entrance of the cave. My brothers and sisters, God can be heard through finely attuned hearing. Elijah can tell the difference between created things, no matter how impressive they may be, and the source of all of those things, God himself. And it's a time when we live where it's very hard to hear that tiny whispering voice. Our culture is into wind, earthquake, and fire, and totally so. I think of the halftime shows at the Super Bowl, where we have lasers, dry ice, all kinds of noise, flashing lights. That's what the promoters think people want, and perhaps they're right. But we need more Elijahs who can hear the tiny whispering voice and stand up to all the false gods that are calling out to us in our day. Listening for and hearing God's tiny whispering voice runs counter to a culture in which we are immersed in so much noise and distraction. Our society is far more impressed with strong driving winds and earthquake and fire, all of which are created things. But being able to hear God's voice is the most important thing. That first commandment that I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me means not giving priority to all those other voices calling out to us that compete for our attention with God's voice. So what needs to be done? Turn down the volume on all the other voices that can overshadow and cancel out the voice of God. Make room literally for silence and reflection in your lives so that you can say along with young Samuel in the temple, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And then we can actually provide the silence that is needed to hear the divine voice. Then we, like Elijah, can stand at the entrance of the cave and behold the presence of our good and gracious God. Hearing God's voice and following it leads to authentic happiness, joy, and meaning, and an authentic experience of God's love. 
And so there is the question that we can ask throughout our entire span of days. Who or what is my God? To what are my energies, my time, my talent and resources devoted? Now is a natural time to think about that. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. God's voice for us to hear is a choice for us to make, to open our hearts to the Lord or to listen to other voices so that God's voice will not give guidance. Among all the things that make up our days which lie ahead, may these days contain God's voice and our hearing of it.